visiting with the uh, Senior Associate Athletic Director here at ASU, Scotty Graham. Scotty, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Scotty, let's talk a little bit about the uh, ASU program. Let's uh, start at the beginning when we went from the uh, club program into uh, a hybrid season and now in the first NCAA season. So tell me a little bit about how that got started and what well, the transition was. Well, a lot of people wonder how we did it, but we had pretty good club team. Coach Powers had been coaching the team prior to us going varsity in the hybrid season. So it's an unusual concept. So when people look around the country, they go, how did you start hockey? Can't believe you have hockey. Well, we had a good club team. We had a place to play right away. Right. So it was easy to transition into it. So when we talk about um, coming from a national championship team at the ACHA level, then going through the hybrid season, obviously there's going to be some growing pains. Yes. And now you've uh, moved into that full um, NCAA season and schedule, and you look at what you guys did this past weekend. Tell me, I know you were there, right, at Ohio State. So yeah. Tell me what that was like as a as a Sun Devil faithful now. Well, I mean, it goes back to Notre Dame game. If you look at it, nobody else skated us. Right. They have a little bit more experience than we do, but we have a very young team, and now we're recruiting on the national level. So uh, this weekend, I knew that if we had an opportunity to skate with them, they wouldn't be able to skate better than us. We'd be just as equal, just as big and physical. So if all things were equal on the playing field, I think we have an opportunity against anybody. Um, I think we played the hardest. Matter of fact, I guarantee you the hardest schedule anybody in the country on skates. Um, that's a credit to our coaching staff believing in what we have. So you look at the guys that are coming in. I was telling Coach Powers earlier today that uh, I think the pitchfork got a big boost from the ESPNU national TV audience, and obviously that helps recruiting. But he's always told me from the time along that uh, the campus itself, the school itself, kind of sells the program. You'd agree with that, I'm guessing? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you can't see how special this place is right now, then maybe you shouldn't be here. Anytime I meet with any recruit, whether it be hockey, basketball, uh, lacrosse, swimming, that if you can't see the opportunities here, then maybe you need to go somewhere else because what we have is unique. Um, we have hockey in the desert. We have lacrosse. I think this is the Olympic Mecca, and that's what we want to develop, to be the Olympic Mecca out west. Um, so every student that comes here, I get a chance to meet him or her, and I let them know, why are you here? You're here to win a national championship. You're here to win an undergrad degree, a master's degree, PhD, Olympic team, world team, championship. But this is the place you want to be. Other than that, do you maybe need to go somewhere else? Let's talk about your specific involvement. Uh, let's talk about your hockey background, which you told me a little bit off camera, but um, where you fell in love with the game and, and why hockey is important to you. Uh, I fell in love with hockey when I was probably five or six. Uh, I grew up on Long Island, Okay. and uh, Mike Bossy was a big-time <laughs> player for the Islands at the time, and they practiced in my hometown, even though they – they played their games at Long Island Coliseum. So I used to go every day after school and look and go, wow, I, I want to do that. But unfortunately, hockey's a very economically challenged sport. And my mom's like, you better think about something else. So I picked up a lacrosse stick, but I always kept my love for hockey. Um, in fact, you see my glove hand right over there? Right. There it is. That's from my boy Kevin Weeks, uh, Soul on Ice. Very nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I still skate. I skate with the guys in, uh, in warm-ups. And, and it's exciting to get a chance to talk to them on ice. I mean. That's part of being an athletic director, getting a chance to know the student athletes, the assistant coaches, and being able to come on ice makes a big difference for me. Yeah, I know I've seen you out there uh, several times when I've been, been out there, and, and it seems like it's not only a part of the job, but it's something you enjoy, actually enjoy doing, don't you? Oh, yeah. They, 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 the guys keep uh, teasing me, the guys <laughs> on the team. You know, when am I getting my stick and my gloves? I said, one step at a time. Let me get my bearings back on these skates. You know, when you drive a race car, you don't go full speed right away. You want to take your time and ease into it. So next year, hopefully, I'll get a chance to get me, get me a helmet and get my get my stick and my glove. I got stick and gloves, but I just don't bring them out there with me. Coach Powers has provided that for me, he and Joey. Right. So so tell us about the program and, and how, how we're building. And I know there's a lot of people that contact me that are uh, alumni from away from here, and they're, they're still going – scratching their head going, is this really a, a serious program? But it is, right? It's an NCAA program that's, that's here to stay. It's a serious program that believes in culture first. That's one thing I can give Coach Brown. a tremendous compliment and the rest of the staff. It's about the culture. It's not about wins and losses. It's how you do it, how you procure yourself, how you represent yourself as a Sun Devil on and off the ice. And he's doing a great job establishing that culture, which will guarantee a competitive team, I believe, for the long haul. So when we look at hockey in the, in the desert southwest, which is something that I cover, I'm up at UNLV and I know they're pattering their program at the club level after what Coach Powers did. So if you can look through a crystal ball a little bit and tell me what you think uh, the future holds for hockey in the desert southwest, especially collegiately, what do you think? Well, I think hockey can be a revenue sport. And I think when you go back to economics, the schools in the Pac-12 have to make a decision. When they look at hockey, it's self-sufficient. It can make enough money to provide for itself. And then giving the student athletes another experience. We have a lot of West Coast hockey players from LA to um, Vancouver. 
you're giving them an option now to come to a place like the Pac-12 and Arizona State in particular to play varsity hockey. That's a total different conversation. They don't have to go east to play at Boston College, Boston University, Penn State, one of the Big Ten schools. So here's an option. If you're a West Coast guy, um, you get an opportunity to uh, stay at home and have a five-hour drive versus a five-hour flight to go watch your kid play and, and have an opportunity to play some big-time hockey against some of the top teams in the country. And some of the guys that you guys have coming in, I know I did a story with um, Johnny Walker, who's who's coming into the program next year, and, and his dad was ecstatic of the fact that he'd be able to just uh, come from downtown Phoenix to watch his son play home games. And, and that's uh, that's something that, that's an opportunity now, right, with the kids locally. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we got some great junior hockey here in Arizona, and it's definitely an option. And you build an affinity as well because they have a desire now to say, I want to grow up and be a Sun Devil on ice. And that's when the program really starts to flourish. That's what goes back to the culture. We're establishing a great culture from the club level. Coach Powers brought that same philosophy from the club. So people wonder how the club team be the varsity team. Well, they're disciplined. They do what they're supposed to do. They're focused. They know why they're getting on the plane. All those things add into winning in the long haul. And as we talk about those athletes on the ice, there are also some real student athletes too, aren't they? I've seen yeah, we have uh, several some of the accomplishments the that they've yeah. done. We have several kids in the Bears. I think the GPA is 3.5. Um, they have the highest GPA on the men's side um, at Sunday Athletics. They do really well. I think because it also to the maturity. They right. come in a little bit seasoned, yep. and they know exactly why they're here. Um, some of the other freshmen come in, and it takes a while for them to get, get a bump until they get in place. But the hockey team comes in again. I have to talk about the culture. Coach Powers expects those guys to do really well in school. and. You, you do not get an opportunity to play unless you do well in school. And I think that has a, a correlation. I got my undergrad and my master's. I didn't play in the NFL for seven years because I happened to be the best athlete, but I was pretty daggone smart. And people don't equate that when they talk about winning and losing, but being an intelligent player is huge. Absolutely. And we talk about um, the program itself, and I'm playing over at Oceanside, and obviously the next step is obviously an arena, and the discussions are in there and out there about what's going to happen. but. Um, what needs to happen for you guys to A, be in a conference and B, to, to be able to put some fans in the seats and, and bring it closer to Sun Devil Stadium? Well, I think a lot of that is just going to be through osmosis or things that are out of my reach. Right. Um, as far as the, the facility is concerned, we recruit what we have. Remember, right. again, this is special. If you recruit kids because of facilities, then you're recruiting the wrong kids. Right. In our mind, that's what we believe. Yep. If you realize how your child is going to be treated, um, special, to watch them grow up, in a healthy environment, in a cultured environment, then you want to come in. And the rest of those things will come. Eventually, they'll come. So how, how long do you think that you can thrive and, and survive in in a, a facility the size of Oceanside? Do you need something bigger to be well, become well, more? Well, 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 and again, that's that's a Rocky Harris, uh, Raymond right. Anderson conversation when right. it comes to construction. So I'm sure Rocky will give you a couple of minutes to talk about that. But for us, we want to concentrate on things we can control. That bring some top kids in here, treating them right, graduating them, and playing their top-notch schedule. The rest of that stuff's going to take care of itself. And in many ways, we got to make sure a conference is ready for us because it doesn't make a lot of sense. And we go to places, and I see, and we, we play against some of the the um, top schools in the country, and they go, whoa, they're pretty daggone good. Especially when we go through warm-ups, and I'm out skating. I see those guys come out and watch us skate, and they go, whoa, now we're big, but we're fast. And that is something, does everybody want that? I don't know. We want the conference that wants us. Uh, Frank Ferraro could also talk to you about that. He's pretty much, his role is to uh, really deal on that side of it. Mine is more player coach centric. Right. We have three administrators on the sport yep. and we have different roles. Um, Gabe's in part of the fundraising part of it, looking at the stadium, trying to raise money sure. for that. And then Rocky obviously does the business and then Frank does the conference affiliation. So I could probably grab him if you want me to and see if he can talk to you about that. So tell me a little bit about what we're, what we're talking is uh, Let's talk about the alumni and their role that they can play to help grow this program um, from the level, from the player level. I mean, obviously the conversation is out there about how good Sun Devil hockey is getting, but, but what can Sun Devil alumni do to not be a negative influence, but be a positive influence? Just stay engaged, obviously get in touch with the Sun Devil Club. If you can donate your time, obviously we want resources, but anything you can donate, any type of skill could be used um, to help our guys develop. Just stay engaged and be involved with the Sun Devil Club. Uh, Scott Nelson is down there. He's a new executive director down there. He's a great guy. So your resources definitely help. Um, but just having a conversation to figure out 
what we need and how we can move this thing forward. The support is always necessary. They came back to the alumni game. They were deep. They were about 35, 40 guys, and it, it was a good deal. Um, so just get staying engaged and being able to tell those stories when they used to do things yeah. and how they envisioned this program going and now that we're here, just bring that stuff to the table, um, all the good stuff and just and all the bad stuff. Because all the experience is important and being the chance to Getting to just tell those stories to our new players is incredible to go, how do we go from a club team? What do we envision? And to that coming fruition, that's a valuable story. And those guys can tell the story like, like no other. Tell me um, on your coach and, and athletic director relationship, obviously you and Coach Powers have a very good relationship. And talk a little bit about that staff and that he's put together and what they're what they mean to the program. I mean, last year he was a little bit limited. This year he's got a, a full staff, training staff, the whole works. How well, much does that mean? It, it's a huge deal when you got a guy like Garnet X. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's a guy that did it at every level to have him in there, Hicksy to have him in there. And then I think the whole staff from Adam, just being at a, the day-to-day -day organization, he has one of the best staffs in the country. And when I meet recruits, I tell them, this is the best coaching staff in the country because the experience you have is over 50 years in coaching. So they've seen it at every single angle. Um, so, like I said, I don't want people to get misconstrued to think that we just took this club team and we went varsity. No, we were a pretty good club team and he ran it like he's doing now. So that culture was set before we, we became varsity. It could be a little bit um, misconceiving to think, okay, wow, we had a club team, we went varsity. No, this club team was pretty daggone good and some of the players that played in the past had the opportunity to play in the NHL. So we're looking at not only your NCAA program, but that club team you speak of is, is pretty darn good this year too with, with what Josh Brown has kind of picked up and, and run with from some of the players that played for coach that, that couldn't get onto the NCAA team. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, there's some tough decisions because again, you establish that culture, but we are in the business of winning and right. you have to put the best people out there and it's in competitive. And it's the same thing that happened on lacrosse because one of the things hockey brought was lacrosse. So right. all the things I told you about the the, uh, the hockey program, same thing about lacrosse. I mean, there's an opportunity now for young know, players in San Diego, instead of going to, to Duke or the ACC, they can come in and play now. And, and obviously the Pac-12 has grown. We do have, you know, automatic qualifier in the Pac-12 now because we have six teams. We right. would hope the same thing come in hockey. Some of it makes sense. Like Washington, I'm not spending their money for them. Yep. The Oregons, I'm not spending their money again, but it makes sense demographically right. and weather to have a varsity team. But that's up to them. So as, as you look at what this program has done for for hockey at Arizona State, but also hockey in the desert Southwest. When you looked at it four or five years ago, did you ever think we'd see hockey growing the way it is down here? Yeah, like lacrosse. I mean, it's yeah. just another option. It's not a shortage of players. And right. giving them an option to go different places to get you know, a quality education. You can go to a big time city, get a quality education and play major hockey. So that's unusual. And like Ray always says, you don't get many opportunities like this. And I'll tell every recruit that. To play, you can put flip-flops on when you leave. Yep. Most places you go play hockey, you better put your down jacket on and your boots and you put flip-flops on some shorts and you're headed out of here in the middle of winter. I know you've seen some experiences with a chance to go back home to Ohio State uh, this weekend. So give me give me a little bit of a story about what, what this, like, this trip was like for you guys going back to Ohio State. Well, to me, it was just, you know, obviously surreal to go back to the place where it started for me. But really to support our kids right. and for them to get a chance to see what they can do when they do it right. right. And just the, I don't know how many teams can rebound after Friday. Yeah. I mean, it's just, are you kidding me? Everything could have went wrong, went wrong. Um, and you come back Saturday at two o'clock, you're talking about less than 14 hours and play that team the way we did on national TV. It's just an opportunity for Coach Powers to sell his program right. to the guys that are here and for the future Sun Devils that are going to be on ice. It just go, whoa, this is real. Now, I know that because I've been around some championship caliber environments. Right. And the culture that he provides there, it's about winning. Yep. And that, to me, is something that everybody doesn't want. That's why I ask every recruit, why are you here? Yep. If you're here to win, master's degree, undergrad, Olympic team, we want to do all of that. If you're here just to try out, then you're not going to be here very long. So tell me what you were hearing buzz-wise from people uh, outside of the program, you know, from the national level while you were there in Ohio State. Were people coming up to you asking you about the program, talking about it? Well, I didn't get a chance to talk to many people. I talked to the equipment people, a couple of people during the events, which they were tremendous hosts. They did a great job. Um, Gene runs a heck of a program there. Yep. I just think that people are overwhelmed and how they think we're going to walk in there and lay down. And right. if you look at that first game, after you take the first 10 minutes away, we skated with them. Yep. Um, so the next day I wasn't surprised, but man, just to be able to go to that locker room and celebrate with those young people, uh, to go into that environment, hostile, on the road, cold, wintertime, you know, get thumped, pummeled on Friday, come outside, skate with them, tie it. And I said, the closer they keep this game, the more we're going to believe. 
And playing at Ohio State, for me, being there, we banked on you being scared of us. Right. We, you're going to be scared. Now it's our job to make you scared. But I knew our hockey team was not scared. Right. So there was going to be a battle. And whoever finished strong was going to win. And we were able to finish. And, and Brad Chandler was what we wanted to compliance people. I thought there were people at Ohio State were going to kill me. Because I'm like, go oh, Devils. And, you know, I was that guy. I'm sorry. I was that guy that game is yelling out the mascot from the other school. And, and just to be able to run downstairs after the game and celebrate with those guys. And for Coach to realize, okay, I peddled this off to these guys. And I believe it. But to, have, to be able to taste the fruit. Right. Why you're still growing a tree is one of the most incredible feelings you could have as an administrator and a person in college athletics. I'm going to finish up with uh, one person we haven't talked a whole heck of a lot, but Joey Gomet, uh, your equipment manager, was able to, to step up at the World Juniors and play a pretty big role as the equipment manager for them. So well, what does that say about well, Sun Devil Program? Well, I'll tell you, staff. Yeah. Um, I said staff, and Joey's included in the staff. Yep. He's a very integral part of that staff. Um, and again, it goes back to Coach Browse and culture. He treats them like pros. Right. So when I get a pro, and when we were adding the equipment person, we knew we had to go get somebody that was good. And for Joey to be able to come here and go, you know what, I want to be part of this. This is special. And you have to have vision. If you have vision, you're probably not going to be happy here. But if you have vision, you're going to love it. So facility's not going to make a difference. It's people and how you treat it. Um, at the end of the day, there, there are reasons why people shop at Nordstrom's because right. of the quality of how they treat you. Right. What's the reason why people come here? we got yep. one of the best equipment guys, best staff in the country. But we'll get a facility because it only takes one person to believe in it. Right. It took one person to believe in hockey, yep. and now we have a varsity hockey team. So, and we have lacrosse, and we have triathlon. By the way, they won a national championship. Yep. We're going to celebrate that. Go, ladies. <laughs> Forks up. Um, so it's an exciting time to be a Sun Devil right now. And, I, and I'm biased, but there's no place like this in the country to be able to do the things we do, be able to mobilize, be able to take a club team, be able to start a lacrosse team, be able to do triathlon, all because somebody had a vision. And, you know, that guy's Ray Anderson. And obviously, you go back to President Crow, and I'd be remiss to go, he found the right guy that fits our culture. But right. he found us. And yep. He found Greg Powers, and he found Greg McElroy, he found Frank Ferrara, um, and just keeps going. So the intelligence of Rocky Harris to elevate him. So we are primed right now to really, really put Sunday Athletics on the map in all areas of what we do, from academically, socially, to mentally, to physically, to championship caliber. We're going to do it all. Scotty, I appreciate the time. I hope we can do this a lot more often, and uh, let's celebrate a national championship not too far down the road. How about that? All right, go Devils.